Good evening. Welcome to another exciting adventure at Bobby's Hobby House. Don't shout, right? Okay. Uh, tonight, the, the title of the program is called Stenciling Techniques, and I have as a guest my wife, Sandy, who is going to talk to us about stenciling techniques. This is not like painting house numbers on the side of your barn. No, but you could do that, too. We have those kind of stencils. By the way, if you need to paint large numbers on the sides of barns, uh, we go up to, what, 12 inch? Mm -hmm. with letter and number stencils. So if you're in the sign-making, do-it-yourself business, uh, we can handle it. What kind of stencils are we going to do tonight? Well, we're gonna, we've, we've done stenciling on the television show before, but we want to get a little bit more involved in it. So I'm going to show a lot of different techniques that you can do with stenciling. And we brought some of the products that it takes to do it with. We certainly okay? have. When you're talking about stencils, stenciling means that you're using a piece of mylar that is cut through and you're stenciling through the design. We have stencils that come in prepackaged for border stencils that um, oh, that's it. Yeah, come in a variety of different designs. So if you want to, to do home decor, uh, to stencil your walls or stencil your, your bed or other furniture and stuff, this is the kind of stencil you would need. These come in long strips so you can do more than one area. You can also get stencils that come everything in one piece. These are called Okay, single sheet still. single Let's sheet stencils one. and these come in a frosted mylar so there's a lot of different kinds of things okay then let's pick up the phone all right already hi you're on bobby's hobby house um hi i was wondering if you had a six model an a6 model yes you probably need to check with the with us at the hobby shop tomorrow uh, when we can look at the shelf there oh okay thank you right thanks for the call now, if you don't find one on the shelf of a stencil that you want, then you can cut your own. So you can buy mylar that is not cut and get a, all you need is a, a felt tip pen that's indelible and you trace your designs on and you use an X-Acto knife to cut it out with very carefully. Or you can Part use of the very a carefully. stencil cutter. Well, let me talk about the very carefully for all a right, second. Do it quickly. Uh, the, a lot of the things with the very carefully are watch your fingers because these knives are quite sharp. And the second thing is, especially for you husbands, wives, and children who want to live to be older people, if you're doing it on the dining room table, for heaven's yeah, sake, put, put something, something down. down underneath it. A Don't good, cut the table top. A good thing to cut stencils on is a piece of old glass that you've put masking tape around the edges so you won't cut your fingers. Or if you have one of those exotic Olfa cutters, don't that's, we sell things like yeah, that? Yeah, we, we sell those. I'm gonna it's a, it's a self-healing vinyl mat. Vinyl yeah, mat. I'll show you one in the second half. I'm going to okay. use it as my backdrop for doing the shirt we're going to do tonight. Anyway, you can cut your own stencils. Now, um, in front of you, Terry, we have a rug that is stenciled. Yeah. This is a heavy cotton rug, so you can do it on pretty heavy things. We use the same kind of paints when we're stenciling. And this is still, you know, it's kind of decorative, but it's okay to walk on it too, right? Oh, yeah. It's totally washable, and, and it'll wear and, and look antique after a while. It'll no longer be white like this one. Um, okay. In front of you over there, we have a couple of stencil sets that are currently in our sale catalog. Get that in there. Okay, you want to mention the sale yeah. catalog. We're, we're, we're having this. a sale um, that runs through April 1st. On and selected, selected merchandise, craft, items primarily, craft and art, and, art items. Mm -hmm. and these two stencil sets are in the sale at 25% off. That's a pretty good bargain. Yeah. To get in order you know, to pick up on the color. bargain thing, you're going to stop by and pick up the sale catalog, mm -hmm. and that's the guide to those selected right. items. And that inside we have. the sale catalog is a little coupon for a free gift. Yeah, I've seen that, that free gift. That also puts you on the mailing list. So. You know, you the get all list. the rest of the catalogs, all the class schedules. And speaking of class schedule, March 10th, folks, it'll be out on the shelf. So you'll need to pick that up. The other things that you need for stenciling, getting back to the stenciling. Meanwhile, back at the stencils. Okay. Now, you can use two different kinds of things to adhere your stencils to 
um, the objects that you're going to do. One is called drafting tape, which unlike masking tape is a lower tack. Tack. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, it so looks a lot like masking tape. Yeah, it tape. looks it's exactly. To, you know, it's hard to tell the difference. It looks exactly like masking tape. Um, uh, but it's less tacky so that if you're going over and covering up painted areas, it won't remove the paint like masking right. tape, especially the on the walls. The drafting students used it and it didn't remove the paper. Right. So it's, it's good for a lot of purposes and it's reusable too. So I'll save that one until I get ready to do my stenciling. Okay. The other way to attach it is called stencil stick, which is a spray adhesive that you spray on the back of the stencils and it adheres your stencil to the object multitude of times. And here's the ones I did, I used to um, that put on my shirt. That a lot like the shirt right. you're wearing. And I could put those Tell me, Sandy, right how back long on ago my shirt. <laughs> did you do two this hours. shirt? Okay, this <laughs> shirt is two only hours. two hours old. Right, oh. so, you know, and this is, this is an easy way because you don't have to hold it down. By the way, this, these hearts were what was left over after I did the stencil, that cut my stencil. This is called negative stenciling where you stencil around the object instead of stenciling the object. You could have done that with the leaves on the one of the other wearable Yes, programs. you could. There's, there's all kinds of things that you can do with this. And this was done by spattering the paint on the shirt, which is just another technique. You know, the old toothbrush, Girl Scout thing. This design you did is that with also... with a toothbrush? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did Actually, I did that. it with a stencil brush because I didn't have a toothbrush. One of the other things I wanted to admire about the shirt is I noticed you have some ribbon bows on the shirt. I had to get the ribbon I in. I wanted to be sure <laughs> that everybody understands that uh, Bobie's Hobby House is famous for its ribbon collection. Well, it's getting low again. Time to order. I wish. Sure. Is that what that salesman was doing in there today? No, that oh. was the lace salesman. Okay. okay. The design of the shirt I'm wearing is in this book. It's called Crafts for Resale. It's also in our sale catalog. The uh -huh. book is, already, is only $249, and then it's 25% off of that. And it's just full of all kinds of things to do. There's also one called Wearable Art. Wait, it's also in could, the sale. Is this going to be one of those projects that would be good for young people to do? Oh, sure. Bible sure. school projects, something like that, or is that... Or working with kids, yes. Okay. Stenciling is easy to do with kids. Okay, now to put your paint, and we use acrylics, I should say that, on most all of our objects. Number one, we use it on wood and walls because it's permanent, latex type of paint. We use it on fabric because it's washable. So it's a very versatile paint. And it's non-toxic. It's non-toxic, and it's, it's um, water cleanup. So it's very easy to use and dries very, very quickly, almost mm -hmm. immediately. Okay, in order to put the paint on your stencils, you can either use stencil brushes, like so. Uh, they come in a variety of sizes and styles. And by the way, these are on sale too. Isn't this very convenient to have oh, all this on sale stuff? But they're so flat on the bottom. Okay, well, you want a stencil brush like that because you use a stencil brush straight up and down, and I will demonstrate that in just a few minutes, ah, okay? right after the break, right? Right, we're going to do that. We right want to talk about everything you need television. to do. Okay, stencil brushes, you should always pick a stencil brush that is slightly smaller than the opening that you are doing because you want to go halfway across the stencil, not the whole way, okay? I know, I'm using my hands again. Right. All right. There's also stencil sponge brushes, um, which come in a variety of sizes. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> mysterious. And again, you can see the little 25% off sticker. So we're just, you're just going to have all this it's at 25% off, off show, show. Right? <laughs> The other kind of sponge is called a petty four. And it's just a little square sponge that has a little handle on the top, and you put your paint in there. Could be mistaken for a sandwich for people who haven't had supper yeah. yet, right? But these, these are really fun to do. Okay, now, before we go away, also, if you're unsure about doing your walls, doing it right on the wall, because if you make a mistake, the only way to do it is to repaint it. They have, it's called, um, let's see if I can get this turned around, wallpaper border, and it's dry strippable, just like your wallpaper, and you can stencil on this and then put this up on the wall. And it comes with different colored borders. Oh, so if you're in a rented widths. apartment, you can stencil right. the walls and then take, and then take them down. off before mm -hmm. you leave. That's right. Now, I'd like to show well, a couple of projects sneaky. real quick that you can stencil on. And this first one is stenciling on a, on a slate. I'll get it out in I a second here. 
Oh, you're going to have to hold backwards. it up and. Okay. No, you're going to have to look directly at the camera. All right, right. we're going to have to do it this way because we'll okay, have the wording backwards. You. Sorry about that. Other way. There okay. you go. Okay. Well, everything is backwards, okay? No, it isn't. It's <laughs> just a matter of where you're sitting. All right. This is on a real slate that's in wood, and it's stenciled like that. And it's very easy to do. This is an easy project, and this is good for groups, too. Go ahead okay. and get phone. Now we've got a telephone here. Hi, you're on Bobby's Hobby House. Hey, good evening. Uh, I noticed that you had a variety of paints there. Yes. And I'm wondering if any of these paints can be used on suede. That's a good test question. Okay, acrylics have a tendency on any fabric that has a nap to make it very stiff. Um, a fabric dye such as Deca or Delta would probably be more successful. I think the Floquel paint Floquel, we have also can yeah. be used on Over on in the leather. railroad department, they have a paint called Floquel, which if you watch it carefully and don't, the thing with stenciling is to put it on very, very thinly. And I do know Floquel will go on suede Nicely. and leather, so it should probably go do that. You call it Floquel? Flo, F-L-O. Flo, Flo, yeah. Flo Quill. Flo Quill. Right. Right, something like that. It's in the railroad department. Ask them. Have you tried it? I've, I've done it on a very smooth nap. Um, I've done it on, on leather. I've not tried it on suede. Didn't but you change I have the done color it on of leather. somebody's shoes with that one time? Yeah, I think your mom did that. Oh, is that possible? So, um, yeah. yeah, you might want to ask Terry's mom about that. I think she's had a little bit more experience with that one than we have. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You're Thanks welcome. for calling. Okay, the next project I'd like to show is um, a wall box that I did today. And if you can get up close, you won't be able to see the stenciling too well. This is done with a kind of fake marbleizing product that we just got in that's also in the sale. Isn't that convenient? That's called Carnival. Let me get it on the other side. Carnival uh -oh. webbing. <laughs> this is funny. Okay. It's called webbing, and it comes out like old Silly String did when you were a kid. So it's. It's kind of a neat thing, Wait, but it, it came makes out it look like, like a what? silly string. Didn't you ever play with silly string no, when you were a kid? No, I was a fairly normal guy. Oh, we always did at parties. We took cans of silly string and sprayed everybody, and never mind. But at any rate, never it comes out in a before. string kind of thing, and it dries almost instantly. This looks like a wonderful time to take a break, and we're going to come okay, back. When we come back, I'm going to show you a couple of shirts, and then we're going to do one real quick. We'll show some shirts and then do a shirt. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll yeah. be right back. <laughs> okay, we're back and we're having a good time. We're going to show you some shirts. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to show you the shirts okay. now. Now. What's the first one? Okay, this shirt was done. This was the last stenciling class that we had. And we stenciled on an all-cotton shirt. And after we got through stenciling, we took a toothpick. And we put little dots around every heart and checkerboard. And then we glued rhinestones on in between them. And we use the, the glitter paint to glue so the So you're combining on. stenciling and applique kind of stuff. Well, it, putting on rhinestones is not exactly an applique. It looked like but an it applique. Does get, well, you are applying them if you want to put it that way. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, but it adds dimension, so everything's not flat on the same plane. I like to combine techniques so that you, you get some texture to the objects and everything. But, you know, this is a very easy project, and it's very good for beginners who haven't even, you know, never done it before. Now, if you want to get really into it and you really like stenciling, this shirt is also stenciled, but this is called theorem stenciling, where you don't have bridges. You know, the, the lines that you see, the background mm -hmm. between parts is called bridges. And this one does not have the bridges. All your pieces overlap and combine to make a piece that looks very much like toll painting. Yeah. And again, we've combined the stenciling with adding rhinestones and using the glitters and the slicks You've to make all our lines. You've done some shading on the bear, too. That's just That's not done by just applying different um, layers of okay. paints from light to dark. First of all, you do all your light, and then you come back and do all your shading and stuff. And okay. you work it wet on wet. Hi, you're on Bobby's Hobby House. I would just like to tell you that I did the blades and the bows today, and, yeah. and I enjoyed it. It's just beautiful. And I would like to know if you're going to have another class on stenciling. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a class on this very one I'm going to demonstrate, okay? 
So watch this and see if this is one you want to take. Okay, I sure will. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thanks for calling. Okay. Now, this is the fun part. She was mentioning the, the braids the, and bows, which is the, the make, make it and take, take it, it class right. we have on Wednesday. This will be every Wednesday for a while? Yeah, um, until the end of May. It'll okay. be every Wednesday. We just started those back up again. Okay. It's like a map of something. <laughs> I think I've been there. All right. Now, the first thing I did to this shirt was I used the webbing product to put in a background so okay. I'd have something different. And we talked about we couldn't really do it on television no, because, because you have to go very, outside. Yeah, it it's makes a spray and it, it's kind of messy. Stan so. wouldn't like it on his lenses or anything. No, but it dries really, oh. really quick. Okay, then you take your stencil and you lay it down where you're going to want it and you attach it. This time I'm going to be using the drafting tape to attach it. If you have openings that you do not want to stencil, then you block those off. Okay. The next thing is, is that you take a small amount of paint, and I do mean a small amount. First demonstrate with the, the stencil brush, and as you can see, I only get the tip of my brush in the paint. Sounds like a good idea. That's right. Then what you do is you put it on a paper towel and dab it until almost all the paint has been rubbed off the brush. Wouldn't believe she was an art major, would you? Okay. Then you start with a stencil, and you're going to be able to see it once I get the black in there. And you go from the outside around the edge. Sometimes you rub off too much paint, and you have to come back. Sometimes you get paint on your fingers, and you have to... It's washable. It's washable. If you're washable. It all comes and I'm out going in a circular motion, but because this is a t-shirt, it has a tendency to want to stretch. So we're going to work our brush from the outside of the stencil to the inside. That kind of keeps it from sweeping paint between the brush Right, the if you go in the, the opposite stencil. way, you, that's how everybody gets the smears. Number yeah. one, too much paint, and number two, going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Now, I don't um, want to go over my, my bow, so I'm going to mask this off. It may not show up on the first, you know, if you place the stencil on this side, but if you do another cat on the back of the shirt or on the front, uh, you may have swept some paint under the stencil that would transfer to the new location, and you have funny edges then. It's going yeah. to be a black cat, huh? Yeah, well, it's a Are black and... Are you superstitious? And, no, it's a black and beige shirt. I wanted a very monotone coloring on this. You could do this in any color. But this is color television, and we're doing it in black and white. That's right. That's, um... Well, I understand they're going to talk about old movies on the next show, so this is pretty good. Okay. Black and white. We'll get them started. There might be new movies. Well, it could be that, they too. They've got old posters over there. You can you know, stand by and you'll see that coming next. Okay. Once you've gotten all your outside areas, and I have one more to do. The important thing is it doesn't matter whether you move the brush in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion as long as you move it from the outside of the stencil to the inside of the stencil and doesn't worry about your paint, your fingers. Now, yeah, that looks pretty awful right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. You, and again, you're going to be able to see this much better once I lift it up. Now, if you want to darken areas, you can go back and apply a second coat. This is how you get your shading is by applying a second coat. I have enough paint out here to do about 10 of these shirts. Okay. Okay, now if you want to, you can leave it just like this. And I will lift this up for a second and show you that there is our cat. There really is a cat under okay. there. Okay. Now we can leave him like this, or we could shade him in if we wanted a more solid cat like the goose was on the other shirt. One thing, if you lift the stencil up, be sure you get it right back in the same place. Good idea. Place. You have a three-dimension cat, and you have to wear funny glasses okay. to see him. If you want a more filled-in cat, then what you do is you start in the area, and you start moving paint into the center from where you were. And when you're using a brush, you do have to hold pieces of the stencil down and get all your area done. Okay? Now, that's how you would do that. Okay. All right. Okay, we just have a few minutes left to do something okay. else. So what's going to happen next? All right, I'm going to do the bow later. So the next thing we're going to do is show you how to use a sponge to create effect on your stencil. So I'm going to do checkerboards in my background. And I'm using the little Petty Force sponge. 
and I'm going to load it, make sure all my edges are done. Then I'm going to take it over to my paper towel for just a second. And then I'm going to lay it down where I want. And because this is a checkerboard, I'm going to do two at a time. This is neat. These sponges come at 12 in a pack. So you can play with a lot of them. And you can wash them up and reuse them. Okay? And then I'm just going to press them down where I want it. Plenty of time. Doesn't take much time at all. No. We've had a lot of people that have watched us do some of these things on television and then come into the shop the next few days to see how it looks when it's dry. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, when you have finished doing your stenciling shirt, speaking of drying, the next thing to do, let's see. This is the artistic it. part, finding the place to put yeah. it, right? The next I'll thing to place. do is, is to let it dry overnight and then to heat set it with an iron. With this particular paint, you have to iron directly over it and then you are ready to wear it and when you wash it but you're wearing yours without having heat set it well the particular paint that i well i'll have to heat set it before oh, i wash it okay. okay i was in a hurry to wear it to the show okay all right when you heat set it you put it in your dryer i mean you iron it with an iron sorry this okay. particular one you have to iron with an iron now this particular one they didn't get solid but that's good and then I have all of the, the spatter in the background to show through and I would continue that down on the other side of the cat but we've kind of run out of time to do much more stenciling um, and I would also stencil the bow which is going to be silver okay but you, you heat the bow set it with will the be iron. silver yeah you heat set it with the iron for about what do you do you iron it right on the face or you iron it from the back side no, directly or put something over, over the it? paint okay it's perfectly safe you have to heat set the entire shirt wherever you have paint on it. Then you wear it in good health. And then when you go to wash it, you turn them wrong side out and do them in cold water on a gentle cycle of your washing machine with a gentle soap and then line dry them. Gentle soap. That's right. Yeah. The paint will last longer than the shirt does. So I it's, it's really good. So hopefully this will encourage someone, if you see how easy it is to do stenciling, that you'll want to do it. It didn't look hard. Now, I noticed you didn't invite me to help, but that's okay. My feelings aren't really crushed. Well, someday um, I'm going to let you do the demonstration, and I'll ask the questions. How about that? I don't know. <laughs> we'll let you I make I hope it's bows. something I know a little bit about. No, we're going to okay. teach you how to make Speaking bows. of things I know a little bit about, we've got upcoming in April. You want to stay tuned for this because there will be a model railroad show, and it's going to be at the Milton Train Depot, and that's April 22nd and 23rd. Those of you that are train people, uh, mark that on the calendar and save yourself a place. It's the weekend following income tax. It's a good time to go out and do something yeah, that's free. Yeah, something is this that's is free? free? Yes, it's okay. a free thing. Let's it doesn't cost take anything. Family and go if you out need and more information this. on that, check by Bobby's Hobby House. If you need more information about stenciling and don't or wearable class arts, schedule. or if you need some ribbon, or if you need a class <laughs> schedule. And don't forget the sale. <laughs> and the sale going on, the booklet for the sale. So we're reminding you about a bunch of stuff. And we have that at Bobby's it's Hobby really House along with time. other odd things. We're just finishing up history fair stuff and science, science fair, fair stuff. Who and knows what will come uh, up next. Yeah, it's been educational. We'll be back again in two weeks. So stay tuned and see what kind of dazzlement we bring out in two weeks. Thanks for being with us tonight. Set your imagination free at Bobby's Hobby.